Folks, I would give you my thoughts on the Gestapo-like FBI raid of President Trump's home, as well as their confiscation of Representative Scott Perry's cell phone. You know I would. But I don't want the Media Research Center and MRC TV specifically to be removed from any and all social media. Now, keeping that in mind, I figured I'd take a step back and let actual government criminals allegedly describe their crimes and tell you the things that need to be said, or in this case disclosed, through their own words and actions, essentially asking for raids to be carried out on themselves. Hey everybody, your resident man in black is back for a very special edition of the best kept secret in the conservative movement, things that need to be said. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kangadis. Really quick, I'd love it if all of you could head on over to Rumble, subscribe to our channel, and hit that plus button. And no matter where you watch our videos, please share, like, and don't be afraid to leave a comment. I love to read what you guys have to say, and I couldn't do what I do without all of you. Now, on with the show. As I said at the top, the alleged criminals in government will all but admit their alleged crimes to you. You just have to listen. They're talking from here. So without further ado, I give you Corruption Palooza. You look at this White House now and it's hard to imagine two FBI agents ending up in the sit room. How did that happen? I sent them. Um, <laughs> um, Something we, I probably wouldn't have done or maybe gotten away with in a more organized investigation, a more organized administration. I thought it's early enough, let's just send a couple guys over. <laughs> and so uh, we placed a call to Flynn, said, hey, we're sending a couple guys over. Uh, hope you'll talk to them. He said, sure. Nobody else was there. They interviewed him in a conference room at the White House Situation Room, and he lied to them. And that's what he's now pled guilty to. What did he think they were coming over there for? Uh, I don't think he knew. I know we didn't tell him. How many FBI agents or confidential informants actively participated in the events of January 6th? Sir, I'm sure you can appreciate that I can't go into the specifics of sources and methods. Uh, did any FBI agents did any FBI or agents confidential or informants confidential actively informants participate actively in the events of January 6th? Yes, yes or no? Sir, I can't, I can't answer that. Did any FBI agents any or confidential FBI informants agents commit crimes of violence on January 6th? Six. I can't answer that, sir. Did any FBI agents any F or FBI informants actively encourage and incite crimes of violence on January 6th? Sir, I can't answer that. Gretchen Whitmer was actually never in any real danger because for the entire time of the so-called so plot being organized, the FBI was completely aware of it and actually was paying an informant to make sure it went it went forward to the stage where they, they thought they'd have enough evidence to arrest them. Look, this guy goes from city council and with the help of Fang Fang ends up in, the, uh, in Congress and then a minute later thinks he should run for president while swearing to the American people that President Trump is a Russian asset. I mean, you know, where does he get this kind of chutzpah at the end of the day? What makes him think he should run for president? Where is all this hate coming from? Where Where's the support coming from? Look, and for Nancy Pelosi to come out and say, everybody knew, everybody knew. McCarthy says, I never knew, no one told me. But as soon as Swalwell knew, the woman disappeared. Why did she disappear? If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome. You think your takedown of three was, prominent was epidemiologists was not political? You, you don't want me that to finish because you know what I'm going to say. Senator, that was the question. Senator, Were you political we will, in taking this, down right, these three point, prominent MTV epidemiologists? Paul, so if they get up and criticize science, nobody's going to know what they're talking about. But if they get up and really aim their bullets at Tony Fauci, well, people could recognize there's a person there, there's a face, there's a vice you can recognize, you see him on television. So it's easy to criticize, but they're really criticizing science because I represent science. Everything that I've said has been in support of the CDC guidelines. Wear a mask, get boosted, 
And you've advocated vaccin- to make it coercive take, and take done look at force, everything and you've advocated that I've said. it be done by mandate. Right. You, you've advocated that your infallible opinion be dictated by law. Right. Your fight is our fight. 2017 will be the year of offense. All of us will go back to Washington and we will push the case against Russia. We will do everything we can to provide you with what you need to win. Oman, Luxembourg, Romania. Correct. So they don't speak any of these languages. Neither one of these guys has any record of success in business. Neither one has a background in international business. Why would they be doing business in Oman, Luxembourg, and Romania? Uh, because, because they have relationships and they have the Biden name that they're able to set up meetings and get people to jump through hoops uh, in an interest to garner favor with the sitting vice president, Joe Biden. I went over, I guess, the 12th, 13th time to Kiev and... Uh, and I was going supposed to announce that there was another billion dollar loan guarantee. And I had gotten a commitment from Poroshenko and from uh, Yatsenyuk that they would take action against the state prosecutor, and they didn't. So they said they had, they were walking out to the press conference, said, no, nah. I said, I'm not gonna, we're not gonna give you the billion dollars. They said, you have no authority, you're not the president. The president said, I said, call him. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you, you're not getting the billion dollars. I said, you're not getting the billion. I'm going to be leaving here. And I think it was, what, six hours? I looked, I said, I'm leaving in six hours. If the prosecutor's not fired, you're not getting the money. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Got fired. And they put in place someone who was solid. Hunter Biden clearly traded on his dad's powerful position and made millions in the process. At this point, nobody is saying he didn't cash in. I mean, except for Joe Biden. Even Hunter Biden admitted in 2019 that his dad's power was very, very useful. I think that it is impossible for me to be on any of the boards that I just mentioned without saying that I'm the son of the vice president of the United States. If your last name wasn't Biden, do you think you would have been asked to be on the board of Burisma? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. I, I don't think that there's a lot of things that would have happened in my life that uh, that if my last name wasn't Biden. A Minnesota bail fund supported by Vice President Kamala Harris during her 2020 campaign helped set an accused domestic abuser free. Now, just weeks after his release, he's back behind bars after prosecutors charged him with murder. But they're not going to stop. They're not going to stop. And that's they're not. This is a movement. I'm telling you, they're not going to stop. And and everyone beware because they're not going to stop. It is going to they're not going to stop before Election Day in November and they're not going to stop after Election Day. And that should be everyone should take note of that on both levels, that this isn't they're not going to let up and they should not. And we should not. Again, we were misled that there were supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that and assault sprang out of that. And that was easily obta- ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but, and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they, they didn't know that. With all due respect, the fact is we had four dead Americans. Was it I because understand. of a protest or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm going to say this again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie, not a single time, never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Remember, these people have no problem bragging to you brazenly about how they abuse your trust and throw away your money. All you have to do is listen. So. Was this perhaps the most important things that need to be said, or will the 87,000 new IRS agents be paying me a visit sometime soon? Let me know in the comments where I do read most and reply to some, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Rumble and hit that plus button. If you like this video, don't forget to share, comment, and give it a thumbs up. Those are the best ways to help these videos reach more people, and it's the best way to let us know you want us to keep these videos coming. Subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so that YouTube might actually let you know when MRC TV comes out with a new video if they haven't censored it or taken it down yet. Like us on Facebook and check out more of our work at MRCTV.org. For MRC TV, I'm Nick Kingadis.